Hey everybody, Stuart here. I hope you're well. Thanks for tuning in. I've just released a new book called Modern Country Guitar Jam Session. To get you ready for that, in this video I'm going to teach you seven essential country guitar techniques. Before we get started, don't forget to hit subscribe and remember to leave me a comment so I know if these videos are working for you. Okay, let's get going. I've just played a pedal steel style bend there. Many times when you're playing country guitar, you're trying to emulate the sounds or approaches of other instruments, be that pedal steels, lap steels, banjos or more. So this lick is all about trying to control the guitar so we can get that pedal steel sound in place. What's crucial here is that we're holding down strings one and two, and then we're bending string three against it. String three is the only note that's being bent in that first bar. So it's critical that you can control the bend, get it up to pitch, and keep the other two strings in place without moving. Pedal steel bends are a real challenge, but they're an amazing skill to develop, and they're really good for getting the ears used to pitching bends correctly. So I'm going to Play that lick really slowly so you can see how it all works now. You can play that particular lick with the pick and fingers or just with the fingers, it doesn't matter, that will give the same sound. What's really important is that control element so the bend gets up to pitch and the three strings in the first bar ring together and then the second and first string ring together in the second bar of the exercise. Next up, hybrid picking, one of the most common techniques in country guitar. It simply means using the pick and the fingers on the picking hand. Some people will do all these licks finger style, which works great, but country players are often going to play this kind of thing with the pick and the fingers. Now, some players will use the pick and the middle finger. Some players will use the pick, the middle and the A finger. And then there are a few players like Albert Lee who will bring in the fourth finger, the C finger, but that's far less common. So what you'll find in hybrid picking is it's often used for playing chords or for playing banjo rolls. The question most people normally ask is why hybrid pick at all? And there are two main reasons for this. Firstly, it means you can play notes on non-adjacent strings, strings that don't sit next to each other. And secondly, it means you can work up those banjo rolls, which are normally based on a pick, middle, ring finger combination. Let's take a look at a hybrid picking lick to see how it all works. In that first example, I'm starting off by playing two strings that don't sit next to each other, strings four and two. So I'm gonna use the, the pick and the middle finger. And then after that, the next lick uses strings four, two, and one, which is where we bring in the pick, middle, and ring finger. That's a great way to get started with hybrid picking, just to get a sense of how the pick and the fingers sit on the strings and how it feels. Of course, if you're a finger style player, you've already got an advantage because you're used to using these fingers. If you're new to hybrid picking, then I'd actually recommend working on some finger style technique as well. So then you're just incorporating the pick with the fingers. The second example is all about playing notes on strings four and two, which are giving us intervals of sixths, which is so common in country guitar. Now you could use the pick on both those strings and just jump from string four over to string two. But what you'll find if you do it properly is that using the middle finger to play string two is gonna give you far more of a pop when you catch that string with the finger and then release it back onto the fretboard.
finally, the third example there is all about Albert Lee style triplets. You start off with a triplet picking pattern on string four, and then you use the M finger, the middle finger, to pluck string two. This next example is all about hybrid picking in more of a rhythmic context, though it also works as a solo. What we're doing here is playing double stops on strings two and three with the middle and the A fingers, and then we're using the pick for string four. You'll find this kind of thing at all tempos, but it's a really, really common rhythmic phrase in country guitar. Banjo rolls are a huge feature of country guitar and they're normally played at high tempos to emulate the sound and approach of the banjo player. You could play this particular phrase with the thumb, index and middle finger and that would be my personal preference. You can see what I do there is put the pick in between these two fingers. However, this is a great opportunity to practice hybrid picking, pick, middle and ring finger. Try this one really slowly to begin with. Banjo rolls are just about getting used to how the patterns work and then you can play many different rolls because they all follow similar patterns. What you'll commonly find with the banjo roll is a combination of three notes, three notes, and then two notes to fill up a bar. That gives you eight quavers and it's a very standard way of playing a roll. One of the big challenges when playing country is the sheer speed at which you have to play. So don't worry if you're going through these exercises slowly, it's extremely common. No matter where you are with your playing, learning country techniques is kind of like putting a whole new set of techniques on top of what you already know. So it's entirely natural that some of these are gonna be slow and difficult to begin with. Persevere, work through them all slowly, and before you know it, you'll be playing proper country. Next up, open string licks. These are so common in country guitar, you've got to learn how to master them. Check out Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed to hear these things at source, but they're used by any country guitar player. The principle is fairly straightforward. If you can replace a fretted note with its open string counterpart, then you go for it. The idea being that you get this big cascading sound that kind of emulates the sounds of pedal steels and lap steels. However, it's quite a tricky technique because you have to get everything really precise. All these notes have to ring and blend together, so it's real fingertip stuff. I'll play this lick for you at full speed and then I'll break it down really slowly for you. Remember, the key thing here is to get accuracy and clarity throughout the whole lick. If the open strings are getting deadened, they're not ringing through, then the effect is not gonna be there. This is a fantastic exercise for getting that fretting hand working really, really cleanly and precisely. Technique number six, 
Chicken picking, it's another one of those that's quite easy in principle, but quite difficult in practice. The idea here is that you're combining normally sounded notes with muted strings, strings that are deadened, to get that kind of clucking chicken sound effect. The challenge with chicken picking is that the muting comes from taking the pressure off the strings on the fretting hand and not using palm muting on the right hand. It's all about fretting hand control. Now, when country players are chicken picking, they're typically not thinking through every single note they're gonna chicken pick. They're just so used to doing it, they can do it at will. But to begin with, you need to be able to think about the note that you wanna focus in on, the note you want to mute. And so this first example is a fairly simple pattern where we're gonna play a fretted note followed by muted strings. Play it really, really slowly to begin with. Remember, getting chicken picking right is all about releasing the pressure on those fretting hand fingers so you quickly get the muted string before going back to a normally fretted notes. It's incredibly precise, so you have to build this technique very slowly until it becomes more of a reflex reaction and you don't even have to think about the notes that you want to get the chicken picking effect on. I'm going to put some chicken picking into practice in more of a real sounding context now. Remember, chicken picking isn't a technique that you'd use all the way through a solo because it would end up sounding quite strange. So what I'm going to do here is play a fairly standard country lick to begin with, and then I'm going to repeat it. But the second time round, I'm going to put in a chicken picking phrase right at the end of the lick, just so you can get a feel of what it's like to play a lick that then has to be chicken picked, so you're thinking about what's coming up. Finally, behind the nut bends. Many country players have B benders attached to the Telecaster, which means they can simply pull down on the strap and the B string will be pulled up. Some have a B and G string bender. However, if you don't, and most of us don't, a simple way of getting that effect is what's called a behind the nut bend. All you do, as you'll see in a second, is press down on the string, the B string, behind the nut, raise it up a semitone, and you'll get again that sort of B bender or pedal steel type bend effect. Behind the nut bends are like any other bend, all about accuracy. You've got to apply the correct amount of pressure behind the nut to make sure that string doesn't go sharp or stay flat. You're gonna typically use it when you've played an open B string as well. And you could also try doing behind the nut bends on a G. Although depending on the key, it's often harder to use the G as you're gonna to have to try and raise it a full tone, which is much more difficult to do. Thanks for watching everybody. I really hope that's helped. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment down below so I know if these lessons are working for you. When you're ready to put all this into practice, don't forget to check out my new book, Modern Country Guitar Jam Session. This one is all about how to think like a studio musician. It's all about layering rhythm parts, both acoustic and electric, how to finger pick, how to strum, how to come up with licks, fills, and melodic solos. I had a great time putting this one together, and no matter what genre you play, I think this is gonna help you out. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.